like that! You are made by humans. We're different! Hi Mark, thanks for taking the time to chat with us today about your feature film, um, Monsters of Man. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your background and what you've done before actually sort of stepping into this project of, a, of an ambitious feature film? Uh, yeah, well I'm a commercial advertising for, uh, director oh, and DP, I sort of DP a lot of my own work. Uh, yeah, I just literally travel around the world just shooting big giant TV campaigns. Uh, the movie is really uh, I'm going to call it an experiment. My wife doesn't like me calling it that, but uh, but the you know we just we did the movie really to and to sell it ourselves, just really to see what this market is like. So we made the biggest movie we can with the least amount of money. We just broke all those sort of uh, uh, filmmaking rules, and uh, there's no rule book as far as I'm concerned. So we just we just went for it and decided to uh, yeah make a film and just literally see what the market's like, trying to sell it, which is obviously ever-changing. So for those that haven't seen the movie, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about the premise and what's it about? Uh, well, I don't want to give away too much, but yeah. um, uh, really it's, it's about a, a, a corrupt CIA agent and a Robox manufacturer. They sort of get together, they're trying to build a, a bunch of prototype robots to sell to, for a military contract. Uh, and they send, like in a, in a sort of an illegal test, these robots into the Golden Triangle, really, to uh, sort of test on a sort of a drug camp, just see if this thing, actually, these things actually work. And lo and behold, there just happens to be a whole bunch of uh, doctors, you know, without borders type things, doing immunisations, and the doctors w witness a crime, um, and they now become the targets. It, there's a little bit more to it than that, but I don't want to give away too much. But there's, a, there's quite a few. There's a few story streams going on. It's not just a simple linear, uh, single story. There's a few few things going on. Yeah. Got to keep a few tricks up the sleeve. <laughs> no, I, I just I didn't want the movie to be too simple. But no. It's, no, it's a good ride and it's action packed. There's no padding. It's a full on proper action movie. So you had to work at quite a fast pace in this film, and you were putting a lot of equipment through its paces. You were using some pretty compact lenses, red cameras, and Miller tripods. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how all that equipment held up? I ended up going for some quite cheap stills glass uh, and the reason was uh, we did our, I've done my test over the years and as we all know and it doesn't matter what people say, cinema glass is, is beautiful and it's mechanically fantastic but the reality is I didn't want to wreck that glass because we were going to be running around the jungle, we we're going to be rained on, there's mud, dirt, nothing and I just didn't feel like killing one of my expensive cinema lenses. So we literally shot this in a whole bunch of little Canon zooms and we bought a whole bunch of these little Rokinon cheap little $300 plastic prime lenses um, <clears throat> and we used those and they were little short throw things. So to the d disgust of a whole heap of uh, high-end DPs that I know and love, a lot of good friends of mine, they all just shake their heads. But they've, some of them have seen the movie and they said, we'd never know, you know, and the reality is you wouldn't. You know, this is movies all finished in 4K. It's, as you can see on the screens here, I mean, it's a 6K monitor, there's a 4K one, it's pin sharp. We used your uh, Miller Compass tripods. Uh, I remember we bought one years ago for a small job we were shooting in New Zealand, uh, the Compass 25, I think it is. I'm not sure what the new name yeah. is for it. And the Miller Solo Legs, Solo did legs. I get it right? Yeah. So we bought that for a helicopter job because we couldn't put our big legs inside the helicopter. So we just thought we'd buy, buy them and just get us out of trouble. Unbeknown to us, they, they, that particular leg system and head system blew me away. So much so that I decided to get five or four more or three more sets, sorry, uh, for the movie because they were fantastic. We could literally go higher legs. We can be at unlevel ground. We can go to 2.2 .2 metres high, I think it was. We put them in the water. We did any, everything. We sort of flogged them. Uh, uh, Tony was quite regiment on set that we serviced them or you know clean them each week. Uh, and but I didn't think we needed to, but he felt that we had to. But he likes to keep gear spot on, which he's a fantastic uh, asset in that sense, making sure everything's done properly. Uh, but the reality is those uh, those heads were uh, a lifesaver. Yeah, I would not have done. I probably won't do another movie again without them if we re if we can figure our cameras this way again, because it was so fast to move, and because we're in the jungle and we're up in the cliffs and caves and 
creeks and mountains and all that sort of stuff. It was, um, it was literally the perfect tripod for the job. Now there's a lot of information online and you've launched this project through Indiegogo. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're launching the film and um, what you're hoping to sort of achieve from that? The Indiegogo campaign is really a, an education tool as well as the backers of Indiegogo will get the movie and all that stuff, but that money will literally go into us spending more money in our social media spend for our advertising and all that. So hopefully we're both helping each other out. So where do people go to find out more? Uh, it's monstersofman.movie. Or you can see it on all those YouTube channels. And you know, we were quite lucky actually with YouTube because the, a lot of people obviously took down the trailer and reloaded it back up on their websites. But uh, it was, it, we had a little coup last, or a few weeks back when it got launched. It got launched at a similar time to Batman. And in some of these, those really big YouTube things, we were, we were literally matching Batman uh, for plays. Like They end up with like 800,000 views and we did the same. I think we're in the millions now, which has been lucky. But, uh, so we're, for a little film that's punching well above its weight at the moment, it's not even released, but let's hope it continues. Thank you very much for your time today and um, greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Dee. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day.